Welcome back to my video and in this video I'm going to share learning notes about gRPC pagination using Google Spanner. What we will learn, we will learn pagination implementations in Google Spanner. We learn about pagination consistency gRPC design pattern for listable collections, pagination token, and improving pagination performance. Now, the first part is pagination in Spanner. How to do pagination in Spanner? First method is by using offset. So this is the first query we have select something select something from some table order by id descending so we can get the latest data and then we limit by whatever the limit for one page okay so this is the first page query the next query will be like this Select something from your table, order by ID, descending, limit. The difference here is that I added a new keyword offset at the end of the query. Right? And the uh, offset value here can be determined by this formula. So offset value is current page number uh, minus one times page size right so let's see example so if I have uh, this query so like something from table order by descending limit 5 offset 5 so the limit per page is 5 and this is query for the second page so the value is the value of offset is 5 page number 2 minus 1 times page size so it's five for this example. So let's pretend that we have 10 data, right? It's already ordered by ID. And what offset does is it fetch 10 rows at the beginning. Okay. And then we offset by five. It means that we drop the first five rows and then it will return to us the next five rows which is data from id 5 until 1 so that's how offset does so with offset it has pros and cons of course the pros is that it easy to implement and then we could jump to a specific page so if you want to jump to page number three page number five it's possible using offset the cons is that it's slow on large data set because it needs to scan all rows from the start okay now we have the second method key based paginations with ID so the first query is the same but the subsequent query is a bit different here I have a where clause I add where clause ID less than the last ID so key based pagination we are using a key to determine what data we need to fetch for the subsequent query the id for this example is the id of the data and then we do it by the square clause so id less than last id from the previous page so this is the example for the second page query where per page we have a limit by five 
select something from your table where ID is less six order by ID this sending limit by five so we have the same set of data but now we only fetch where ID less than six so we fetch from five to one right because we limit by five so the pros of keybase pagination with ID is that it doesn't require scanning over unnecessary data so in terms of performance this should be better and the cons the implementation is harder because we need to track last ID data right and we could not jump to a specific page as it requires previous record data right and the third cons is that it does not work if your ID is a random string like UUID right so for that case we can use the third method using keybase pagination with time step so we usually use UUID as ID and spanner to prevent write hotspots and then if you rely on the chronological order of records we cannot use ID log what does it mean so for the first page query we modify a little bit the order clause here so right now we order by created at the sending and id sending right so we use column created at so we can receive the latest data from the database if you want to receive the fresher data first you can use updated at column for example so it's up to your requirement now for the subsequent page query is a bit complex so let me just read it right now and then we see we'll see the example in the next page so we can understand it better so here i have the where clause in the where clause i have two uh, clause the first one is create at equals with last created date from the previous page and id greater than the last id or created at less than the last created at. so what does it mean here i have the query for the subsequent page or for the second page to be precise so take a look at the where clause okay now i have the data example here we have a uh, 10 data right this is already ordered by created at the sending so the latest created data first and also ordered by id ascending right so in this case uh, because of this uh, where clause we fetch the data that is created at uh, less than what is this uh, November right January February March April May June July August September uh, September September 1st so which we start to fetch from this data and limit by five right but uh we have the second case in the second case we have the same we have two data with the same timestamp let's say they created exactly at the same time like this so to handle this case we need these uh where clause so we get the created at equal with the previous page date and id is greater than the last id from 
the previous page so now we can get also the the next data correctly okay so the pros it doesn't require scanning over unnecessary data works with random id like uid and cons is implementation is harder now because we need to track uh, the last id and the last timestamp data and also the same that we could not jump to a specific page as it requires previous record data so for the summary for pagination if jumping to a specific page is a strong requirement use offset method because the other methods we cannot jump to a specific page right otherwise use key based pagination if id is a random string use timestamp column as the key for paginations okay now in this page let's see how to check the last page how do we know if this is the last page of the data that we want to fetch there is an easy way to determine that <coughs> is that by by adding one into the page size value so let's say uh, the clients want to fetch five data okay but we fetch six data then if total rows that returned less than the total size which is six or page size plus one if that happens it means that we are in the last page if that's not happened which mean it means that there is data for the next page right we we are not in the last page easy now let's check about pagination consistency right how to ensure the snapshot of data to be consistent now the first method is by limiting using timestamp query right so we have the first page query now after we query the first page query we get the timestamp of that query and then use it for the subsequent page query so in the subsequent page query we add additional where clause here i'm using uh, just for example i'm using updated add a column uh, less than the first page timestamp so i will retrieve only data that updated before the first query timestamps so any other data that's updated after that we will not return in these paginations right uh, the limitation is that if you are using update date and update frequency is high then probably you can get less data because uh, the data keeps updated the updated that columns is updated then you get the less you get less data for the next page right uh, the second method is by using timestamp bound transactions what does it mean so here i have a simple query uh, where i query spanner using uh, go okay using go language here i'm using the the sdk the library uh, of spanner in go so for the first query here i run a read only transactions right and then execute the query and then from there after i do with something with the data i can get the read timestamp of the data right so this i get uh, i put a informations label like this just in case you are curious how 
Google's panel handle the the time synchronizations they using Google True Time. Now for the subsequent query, we are using also read only transaction, and then we set the time stamp bound, and then we set the read timestamp with the read timestamp from the first page query okay so it means that the snapshot of the data that we will receive is based on the read timestamp from the first query any data updates uh, will not be captured by this query right so this uh, timestamp bound is actually using what is so called uh, MVCC or multi-version concurrency control so it's not MVCC it's not uh, exclusive for spanner only there are other database also using this algorithm multi-version concurrency control so what does it do first when we write a data we make a write transitions transition t right this is write transition it will has it will have a write commit timestamp right and then each value of the data that we write will be tagged with this uh, timestamp with this new timestamp right it is not uh, overwriting the previous value just add the new tag okay then when we read the transactions we have three transactions and then we specify the read snapshot right then uh, the read transactions will ignore value where the write transactions is greater than the read transactions so we'll, it will ignore the newest uh, versions of the data and then by default the retention value is one hour we can modify it this is configurable and spanner in the background will continuously do the version garbage correlations right to reclaim uh, versions after they expire so if if the key okay let's explain this in the summary right so if a snapshot consistency is not a strong requirement well we can omit it because there is some edge cases that we need to handle if we're using a uh, consistent uh, snapshot like for this for example if the key of the timestamp is too old the read timestamp is too old it will return an error because it's too old the retention value is only one hour uh, so the applications need to handle this case correctly for example, if your user open a page and they are idle for more than an hour, then you need to handle it correctly. Now let's discuss about design patterns. A listable collections should support paginations. Okay, so let's talk about the left side first, All right? So in grpc this uh we have a rpc for example list singers okay it will list down all the singer data it will has the request and then the response <coughs> but important here is that in the request we have two fields first is page size and second is page token so page size this will determine the maximum size of the data that we will return per page right and then 
page token this is to retrieve the next page of results and in the response message we have the list of the data itself and also we have next page token which is this is a pagination token to retrieve the next page results okay so in the right side i have a flow chart so this is the flow very simple actually so the client start and then they send the request and and then in the server it receives the request and check whether there is a token there is a token or not right if there is a no token we can assume that it is a first page query and if there is token we can assume that it is a subsequent query right and then we query to the database and then we check is this a last page or not right if this a last page yes then we give a response back without the next page token if this is the last page we give response back with the next page token right so if it is not the last page then the client will receive a response with the next page token which they will use that to send another request for the next page but if the client receive the response without next page token and that's the end of the call right now let's see the pagination token structure so pagination token um, consists of so this is actually depends on what pagination method you will use in this example i'm using the third one okay the the key base with timestamp so pagination token consists of id from last record of previous page and then updated time from the last record of the previous page and also read transition time from the first page here is the message example of page token in proto above we have last id and then last updated time and first query time right that's the structure now we should encode it here token will be encoded in base 64 url friendly encoding so here i have a code written in go just for example right so here i initialize the page token from the proto buff generated proto buff then i serialize it i call proto.marshall uh, basically i serialize the this variable into bytes and then i convert it to base 64 string and i return it in the response right this is the example of the string uh, for decoding it's basically similar we just reverse the order so we uh, we started by decode the next page token and then deserialize the token from bytes to the message and then we can get the data and use it for the next query pagination performance improving pagination performance right so how to improve pagination performance right if you see that uh, basically again this is depends on what uh, pagination method that you use if you are using the third method so you can try this so first in the third method we query the data based on the update data right we do like where update data less than blah 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 so because we paginate or we uh, fetch data heavily based on the updated data or created data basically based on the timestamp so we can create a secondary index based on that timestamp column that we use as paginations and then uh, we have to think again because if we create a secondary index 
this is the cost intelligence so spanner divides data among servers by key ranges and as such keys they need to be carefully considered to ensure performance okay that's how uh, spanner does to basically uh, distribute the data now monotonically increasing keys create a hotspot as data is always added to the end of the same spread and this can easily create a performance bottleneck under load now our index is based on timestamp column which is it is a monotonically uh, keys so we can uh, handle that by using a short ID so we create a new column short ID this is to avoid writing hotspot due to the index right and then we use this short ID uh, to to create the index okay so this is the example so this is the example how we added uh, a new column in the database with name short ID right this uh, will generate a number in range of minus 18 to 18 this is based on modulo of has number of singer ID and stored in the new column share ID right then after that we can create a index secondary index so this is the example of the query or DDL so we create a new filtered index with this name on this table and the index is combination of share ID and create time right so with this hopefully uh, the performance can be better and hopefully there will be no overhead hotspot <coughs> so this is the learning uh, resource I will put it also in the video descriptions and yeah that's all that I want to share with you I hope you like this short video until the next video, keep learning and stay healthy. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.